So what we're looking at here then is uh, effectively a front end onto the insurance application I was talking about a few moments ago. This is also written in the dynamic scripting uh, feature pack uh, built around the dojo and it basically just checks the transaction rates of what's going on in the system as we see it. So what we can see in the right hand table here is all the different types of uh, actions that are going on, the activity in the application itself, so there's customer inquiries and ads. Uh, then you have the uh, insurance problems or insurance application change themselves. So we have four different types of insurance policy, motor, endowment, house, and a commercial property. And the actions you can perform on those, so inquires, adds, deletes, and updates. Uh, customers, you never delete them. You can inquire and you can add them, and they may no longer have any policies, but we always keep the customer data itself. What we see on the left-hand side here is the total transaction rate is around 2.9 business transactions a second. All this is being driven by the workload simulator program uh, to uh, emulate 3270 terminals as though people were actually logging onto the terminals and going through and running these transactions themselves. But we don't really have that many people going through at three a second. Uh, it's obviously it's all automated. And then at the bottom here, this is just a quick pie chart showing uh, the different rates, uh, the different um, percentages that these transactions are going through with. Each of the business transactions isn't a single kicks transaction in itself. It could be anything up to about 10 different transactions. And we're not trying to stress the application here. This is just sort of background noise as, as it's ticking over. It can be uh, brought up or brought down in terms of rate if we choose to. The main, if, uh, the main action we're going to be interested in, though, is this commercial ad. So every time there's a commercial ad, which is obviously only one of the many different activities that's going on, we're going to see an event kicked out onto MQ, and that event is then going to be picked up by Cognos Real-Time Monitor and uh, transformed into some widgets and some cubes that we can view through Mashup Center. So that was just a quick overview then of what the application looks like. And you can see the numbers ticking over. This is set to update every 60 seconds or so. What we have in terms of the 3270 terminal, though, is this is what a, a user would, in theory, see. So I'm just going to try and add a policy in just to show what that would do. So as soon as I hit Enter here, we see a new commercial policy has been inserted. That has caused an event to be fired onto MQ and then to be picked up by Cognos. So what we're going to look at now, then, is how Cognos is going to look inside Mashup Center and the sort of abilities we can pick out from there and the data from that. So this is uh, bringing the whole thing in together inside the uh, Mashup Center. So on the left-hand side here, we have a widget that's been developed inside Cognos uh, that shows us the recent policy, so all policies in the last hour. And eventually this will update with the policy we just put into place, and we'll be able to see that. On the right-hand side here, we have the ability to go and query the live customer data. So if we were to pick this top entry here with a customer number of uh, 1364084, then we can go through and query that. And this goes back to Kix through the Dynamic Scripting Feature Pack. We get the customer information straight away here. We can see he's only got a single policy with us, which is the commercial policy he's just taken out. We see the postcode on the address of the uh, property is just insured should match up with the postcode we see over here. What we can also see is that the value of the policy he's just taken out is 21,000, which we flagged as being high risk. We set these values ourselves, the watch points on there. Um, very simply, we've just said that anything below 10,000 is a low risk, anything between 10 and 20 is a moderate risk, and then a high risk. You have the ability to color code and, and produce other sorts of uh, warnings to keep an eye out for. All of the columns in the recent policies view are sortable. So we can sort by postcode, we can sort by customer number, or we could sort by the value as well. So I've just chosen to sort by postcode here, and you can see they're now alphabetically sorted. I will just take this opportunity to point out that all of this data is completely fabricated. The postcodes aren't even real. Uh, it is all just being uh, basically randomly generated. The other thing you can do is filter on these as well. So for example, we could choose to put in a custom filter and show anything that pops up in between AD0 uh, sorry just a little bit slow on the uptake there and AD9 when I apply this filter we should only see the AD postcodes available in fact none match that filter just clear that the other views that we have uh, further on down the page then is we have this donut chart showing the spread of policies that are available by postcode. What this spits on then is the first two letters of the postcode, so we can immediately see that we're seeing more policies coming in from the JO area than anywhere else. 
So if we click on this, it should be diggable. It should then go down and break this down into further detail so we can see the third digit of the postcode. So we can see that it's, it's a fairly even spread amongst the 10 different numbers we would see there. To be honest, that's kind of what we would expect to see based on the fact it is randomly generated data. But if there were any anomalies, you could have the chance to go down and investigate them further, pick out any details based upon those. The next widget we have on the right-hand side here is the total policy rate over the last hour. As I was saying, there are three business transactions running through the system every second, but not all of these are the commercial ads. There's a lot of other things going on in there as well. What this is showing us is we're getting around 78 of the commercial ads on a per hour basis. So you'd have the ability to see if things had sped up for any particular reason or if things were slowing down. It gives you the chance to go in and, and dive into a little bit more detail to see what exactly is going on with the systems. Finally, the last widget we have available, which is again working off the events that are being sent out into uh, Cognos real-time monitoring, is the average value of all the policies that are coming in. This graph at the minute is slightly distorted because earlier on I put in some events that would do exactly that to show us that the BE uh, postcode has a much higher average value than any of the others. This is somewhere in the region of 444,000. As I say, it's all made up data. The other ones are all in the region of about 10 to 12,000. If we hover over them, they should pop into life as well. This again is diggable, so you could click onto one of those and it would show you the averages based upon the, uh, the third digits, a bit more than that. So you can see that the, the real high value ones are the ones that have gone into the B1 area, and those are the, uh, the fake events I put in purely to generate those. So, what we have then is Mashup Center pulling all this data in for us in a very simple fashion. Uh, the, the widgets at the top. Uh, where we're querying Kicks itself is taking this customer number and use the wiring then to fire that off to send custom URLs into Kicks into the dynamic scripting, which then sends back the JSON data and it's just formatted for you at no, no work at all. You just basically say this is where I want to get it from. You can pick and choose the columns you want it to show so you can, you can take out if there's some information there you don't need. The code itself as to uh, what's involved in dynamic scripting is very basic. Uh, I just have a quick shot of some of what it looks like here. And you can see it taking use of the uh, the Kicks JKicks API to be able to browse through files. It's then uh, taking out a record value, and it's it's setting that to be a string, and it's sort of substringing out based upon that. There is another piece of technology you can use called JSOS, which will map this information back out to another Java object, and then you wouldn't need to go through and do this. So that would be the next step in what you could do with this side of the transaction. It would make your code just a little bit cleaner. But in terms of just getting something up and running and available, this is the easier way of doing it. There is further work that could be done with a mashup center, the power it gives to you. You would be able to link in the customer numbers here so that rather than having to type the customer number from one value into the next, you could just click on it, it would load that information straight up through. The power it gives you uh, is great. We just run out of time in terms of getting things put together for this demo. And that's basically everything you can see then. It's the full round trip from the 3270 uh, session, taking it through the events being generated onto MQ, being picked up by Cognos, and then this data being exposed through into Mashup Center itself. So that's all I have to say on this demo, and at this point I'd like to move back to the slides then.